Let's take a look at some of the tools that we can use to view our data in different ways. Um, we are going to be looking at this toolbar here on the top right hand side of the screen. Click that first icon there and it opens the map configuration dialog box. We've got three options. As you can see, we've got crash points, heat map and stack. So let's go through each of those. Let's start with crash points. The crash points allows you to change the symbology of what you see in front of you. And um, we do talk about this a little bit more in depth in um, creating maps, but um, for the purposes of just visually looking at your data, um, we'll change some of these on here. So the first option here allows you to change the actual shape of the symbol that you're using. Um, so right now the default is the circle. Um, the red circle represents the crash locations that you have um, selected. And those gray circles there represent non-selected crash points. Um, I like to turn those off just because I'm not interested in looking at um, that data right now. So I deselect that box there, press apply, um, and you can see what that does to your map. So let's change some of the other values that you have there. Um, you can change the shape of the icon there. We've got four different options to choose from. We've got circle as the default, diamond, square, and triangle. Let's go ahead and change to diamond. Press apply um, and you can see what that does. So it makes your icons a little bit smaller there. So maybe you want to change the size of the symbols so you can increase or decrease the size. So let's go ahead and change that to, let's do 14. Press apply um, and you can see what that does there too. So lastly, um, you can change the color. Let's go ahead and change ours to blue. Press apply. Um, and you can see what that does. So crash opacity and markup uh, opacity are the next couple of options there. You see um, these can be edited. This changes, um, crash opacity changes the transparency of the data that you're working on. So you may wanna um, see the data with some underlying um, uh, base maps, maybe consistent of aerial imagery or something similar like that. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine as it is for now. Um, markup opacity um, can also be edited, but since we don't um, mention how to create markups in this um, video, I'm not going to go over that option. We do discuss markups in another video tutorial, so be on the lookout. We discuss about uh, markups in the um, creating your map uh, video. So um, take a look at that if you want to change that. Other menu options there we've got, we've got show non-selecting crash locations there. Those are those gray dots we turned off um, a second ago. These may This may be um, a good place actually to note that if you hit the refresh button on your URL um, uh, in the search bar, this will return all of these options that we're changing right here back to the original default settings. So when we opened iCat, you've seen the red circles, the gray circles. Um, so if you want to save these settings, you can go right here to the bottom of the page um, and then save as default. So as long as you um, do not clear your cache, um, these settings will be restored. So you don't clear your history or clear your cache or anything like that, um, and you can save it as that. So uh, more menu options that you see here is the next option there is um, show crash thematic. So this allows you to review the crash types that you have. Um, you've got several um, options there to choose from crash severity or crash year. So this isn't possible um, unless you're zoomed in. So let's just go ahead and zoom in slightly. Um, crash severity allows you to change your data, uh, breaking it down into these categories, um, ranging from fatal crash to property damage only. So notice we only have a few years um, currently selected. So you can see um, different colors there. It's a little bit more defined if you um, select all of the years. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the table of contents here on the left hand side of the screen, press select all, go back over to the map configuration dialog box and change the thematic, uh, thematic map to crash years. And then you can see um, a lot more data there um, defined a little differently with those options selected. So the next tool on that menu is heat maps. Let's zoom out um, a little bit. Heat maps represent the higher frequency of crashes. So the more the red areas that you see on the map here, um, the more crashes occur in that particular area. Um, so you can change the intensity of that if you wish. You can see what that does. Um, the higher concentration of crashes um, as maybe you would expect, um, would be in the more densely populated area. Um, don't see so much data there in the rural part of Iowa. 
Um, okay, so the last option um, on that map configuration toolbar is stacks. So you have to be zoomed in for this. Just zoom in slightly. Uh, the first tool allows you to change the topic that you're viewing. So the menu has, um, you can see we've got several options there. We've got crash severity, <clears throat> drive agenda, time of the day, um, and everything in between. So you've got um, options there to you change that, then hover over your um, stack, and it breaks those down for you. Um, using those different categories. So you can see the um, opacity can change with that as well, if you wish. You can also change the angle of the stack. I'll do that. You can see what that does to that. Um, and you can also change the length of that stack too, so you can modify that. Um, you can see what that does to the map there, changing some of those settings. The very last option um, on the tool set there is snap distance. What this does, if you change the snap distance, this groups crashes based upon whatever number you put in there um, and the units that you use. So let's change the number to, let's do 3000. Um, and you have feet as, uh, meters or feet to choose from as the unit. So we'll go ahead and leave it. The unit says feet right now, press apply. Um, and then you can see what that does to your data and it groups that data based upon um, the 3,000 feet that you selected. So one last thing you may want to look at to change the way that you're viewing your data um, is the base map that underlies everything that you're working on here. So uh, let's close the um, this dialog box here and the small dialog box here there to the left um, hand side of the main menu. Select that and this allows you to change that ma base map. You've got your Esri maintained maps there at the top. You scroll down to the bottom um, and this gives you a couple of DOT maintained maps. So you might see um, a few more pop up from time to time. So you see this gives you a quick look at some of the ways that we, uh, we can view our data um, differently. Be on the lookout for additional tutorials cover covering some of the um, other tools available in iCAT.